Here we are then at Article 5, which reads, Purposes of Procedures. Procedures may be carried out for the following purposes only. A. Basic research. Now that's research that doesn't really have an aim. It's sometimes called blue skies research or curiosity driven research. Uh, basically, the animal rights community will never be able to prove that animal models are an inefficient way of improving human health because it doesn't have any aims. You can't prove that it's wrong. B reads, translation or applied research with any of the following aims. 1. The avoidance, prevention, diagnosis or treatment of disease, ill health or other abnormality or their effects in human beings, animals or plants. 2. The assessment, detection, regulation and modification of physiological conditions in human beings, animals or plants. Or 3. The welfare of animals and the improvement of the production conditions for animals reared for agricultural purposes. C. For any of the aims in point B in the development, manufacture or testing of the quality, effectiveness and safety of drugs, foodstuffs and feedstuffs and other substances or products. D. Protection of the natural environment in the interests of the health or welfare of human beings or animals. E. Research aimed at preservation of the species. F. Higher education or training for the acquisition, maintenance or improvement of vocational skills. And finally, G. For forensic inquiries. Now we're on to Article 6, Methods of Killing. One reads, Member states shall ensure that animals are killed with minimum pain, suffering and distress. Two reads, Member states shall ensure that animals are killed in the establishment of a breeder, supplier or user by a competent person. However, it says, In the case of a field study, an animal may be killed by a competent person outside of an establishment. 3. Reads, in relation to the animals covered by Annex 4, the appropriate method of killing, as set out in that Annex, shall be used. So let's have a look at Annex 4 now. Here is Annex 4, Methods of Killing. So we've got one and two parts on this page, and you can see it's in the Official Journal of the European Union. Uh, I'm going to have a, take another slide of one and two, just so we can get a clearer look at it. Here is part one, and it reads, In the process of killing animals, methods listed in the table below shall be used. And we'll have a look at that table in a minute. Firstly, it says, Methods other than those listed in the table may be used. So these are exemptions. And it says, A, on an, on an unconscious animals, providing the animal does not regain consciousness before death. And B, on animals used in agricultural research, when the aim of the project requires that the animals are kept under similar conditions to those under which commercial farm animals are kept, these animals may be killed in accordance with the requirements laid down in Annex 1 to the Council Regulation EC. Anyway, that's a completely other, other way probably to do with killing animals in agriculture. Okay, so we won't dwell on that too long. Let's have a look at part two now. In part two of Article 6... It's to do with the killing of animals. It reads, The killing of animals shall be completed by one of the following methods. A. Confirmation of permanent cessation of the circulation. One imagines that means the heart stopped. B. Destruction of the brain. C. Dislocation of the neck. D. Exsanguination. Or E. Confirmation of the onset of rigor mortis. Uh, D. I imagine means... Uh, bleeding the animal to death. Uh, that's the only thing I can imagine that means. So you can kill the animal by bleeding it to death as well. Anyway, let's have a look at table 3 to see which is the appropriate method to kill different types of animals. So here is table 3. So you can see anaesthetic overdose. So fish, amphibians, reptiles, birds, rodents, rabbits... Dogs, cats, ferrets and foxes, large mammals and non-human primates can all be killed in this way. But if you go to captive bolt, it says that reptiles can be killed by captive bolt and rabbits and large mammals. But the rest can't. Carbon dioxide poisoning, you can do that to birds and rodents but not the others. 
Cervical dislocation, no in fish, amphibians and reptiles, but yes in birds, rodents and rabbits. Concussion, percussive blow to the head. Everyone can have that as a way of being killed, except for large mammals and non-human primates. And then you've got decapitation, electrical stunning, inert gases, and shooting with a free bullet with appropriate rifles, etc. We're now on to Article 8, Non-Human Primates. Uh, considering that we were hoping that non human primates would be outlawed from being experimented on the EU. This is a particularly distressing article. Anyway, I'll read it. Subject paragraph 2. Specimens of non-human primates shall not be used in procedures with the exception of those procedures meeting the following conditions. Now, it would have been a lot quicker to say what you couldn't use primates for because basically it seems like you can use primates for nearly everything as you will see as we go through this a the procedure has one of the purposes referred to in one points b1 or c of article 5 of this directive and is undertaken with a view to the avoidance prevention diagnosis or treatment of debilitating or potentially life-threatening clinical conditions in human beings so they have taken animals or plants out of the original article 5 there but that gives them a pretty large scope to use non-human primates for nearly everything really uh, what's point two point a or e of article five point a of article five is basic research so you can use non-human primates for basic research and e is research aimed at the preservation of the species so say if a certain type of monkey was looking like it's going to become extinct you could res you could experiment on it in order to try and save the species as a whole and at the bottom of the slide it says b there is scientific justification to the effect that the purpose of the procedure cannot be achieved by the use of species other than non-human primates so there is it, so if there is an alternative to using uh, monkeys we're mostly talking about here you have to use it that's all they're saying there okay let's just get on to the next slide now uh, this one is still part of Article 8, Part 1, and it's just saying a debilitating clinical condition for the purpose of this directive means a reduction in a person's normal physical or psychological ability to function. So that could mean something like a runny nose, or mild headaches, or a little bit of weight gain. Uh, a little bit of a bad knee problem, I mean, it's such a wide definition that really the vivisector is going to think well I can experiment on this monkey for almost anything because anything really falls into affecting a person's normal physical or psychological ability to function so I mean that's one of those little clauses that catches everything and means the vivisector is totally protected by the law part two of article 8 as you can see before you uh, just to reiterate exactly as far as I can see what has been said on the previous slide just giving them a large scope to allow them to experiment on non-human primates listed in Annex A which I don't have to hand but it probably just refers to uh, monkeys, maybe of slightly endangered species, not your usual marmosets and uh, macaque monkeys that they usually experiment on, but other monkeys, and I think they're just covering their back there. So I'm just going to skip on to part three of Article 8 to look at great apes now. Okay, this is part three of Article 8. Eight, and it says notwithstanding another way of saying that is in spite of paragraphs 1 and 2 great apes shall not be used in procedures subject to the use of the safeguard clause in article 55 2 well we're quite a long way away from that so let's have a look at that now here it is then article 55 safeguard clauses and we're going to look at number 2 it reads, where a member state has justifiable grounds for believing that an action is essential for the preservation of species 
or in relation to an unexpected outbreak of life-threatening or debilitating clinical condition in human beings, it may adopt a provisional measure allowing the use of great apes in procedures having one of the purposes referred to in points B1, C or E of Article 5, provided that the purpose of the procedure cannot be achieved by the use of species other than great apes or by the use of alternative methods. However, the reference to Article 5b1 shall not be taken to include reference to animals and plants. So in reality, great apes have one little protection that non-human primates, i.e. monkeys, don't have, and that is, even under this safeguard clause, Article 55, they still will not be able to be experimented for basic research whereas non-human primates, monkeys, will still have to undergo basic research experiments. So that's the only difference here. So they don't actually, in reality, have very much protection, great apes, and this allows them to be experimented on for all types of reason. You know, if we just look back at Article 5, it says the avoidance, prevention, diagnosis, and treatment of disease, ill health, or other abnormality, or their effects in human beings, but it does say not animals or plants. Also under Article 55, it says C as well of Article 5. And if you remember, and this is for great apes, remember, it says for any of the aims in point B in the development, manufacture or testing of the quality, effectiveness and safety of drugs, foodstuffs and feedstuffs and other substances or products. So you can see how wide the scope is for great apes to be used in experiments again. So I do worry that there's not much uh, protection for them. OK, we're on to Article 9 now, animals taken from the wild. 1. Animals taken from the wild should not be used in procedures. If they had left it at that, it would have been great. However, Part 2 says competent authorities may grant exemptions from Paragraph 1 the basis of scientific justification to the effect that the purpose of the procedure cannot be achieved by the use of an animal which has been bred for use in procedures. That might be because the animal a vivisector wants to experiment on only exists in the wild, might only exist in the wild say that could be a rare type of monkey and therefore it would obviously be impossible to obtain that type of monkey from the usual laboratory animal suppliers who say usually just stock, it's a funny word, but stock macaque monkeys or marmoset monkeys or say beagles and they don't uh, stock other types of dog that's what that must mean so just because a vivisector wants a particular animal that he can't usually get so they just put that clause in there for that reason. Before I read out part 3, uh, in article 3 definitions I said I would define one more thing and it was going to be competent authority and it's in part uh, 7 of article 3 definitions and it says competent authority means an authority or authorities or bodies designated by a member state to carry out the obligations arising from this directive so that's probably going to be somebody from the Home Office so that's what they mean by competent authority okay back to article 9 animals taken from the wild part 3 reads the capture of animals in the wild should be carried out only by competent persons using methods which should not cause the animals avoidable pain suffering distress or lasting harm any animal found at or after capture to be injured or in poor health shall be examined by a veterinarian or another competent person and action shall be taken to minimise the suffering of the animal. Competent authorities may grant exemptions from the requirement of taking action to minimise the suffering of the animal if there is scientific justification. So they've even put in a get out clause here. Uh, why, would a, why would there be scientific justification for a competent authority to say to a vet, do not relieve the pain, suffering, distress or lasting harm that this animal is going through. The only thing I can think of is perhaps psychological experiments. And they are some of the worst experiments. You know, they deliberately frighten animals to try and induce mental illness in the animals, i.e. trying to create a model of the mental illness. So I can only imagine, say, if they were looking at the distress from going 
from the wild environment of an animal to the laboratory environment. If they were actually dis studying that distress, obviously they wouldn't want it to be relieved by a vet, but the mind boggles, really. I mean, at least they could try and relieve the suffering.